No, look, I mean, we've been very happy uh, with the event thus far. You know, it's, it's been a, a good amount of competition. At the end of the day, we've got new world champions on the road and on the time trial. Um, we've had fantastic support from uh, a number of different organisations. The gist of it is that the riders have all uh, indicated that they've had a good time, that they've been very pleasantly surprised, and that's really the good thing. Uh, a bit happier with the conditions than yesterday. We saw everybody suffering, so happy it's overcast and still. If it can stay like this all day, it'll be perfect. A real beautiful city here, a real beautiful and very exciting. And, uh, looking forward to a good day in the beautiful South African countryside. Right. Go out to the cane fields and enjoy. And they're away! The 30 to 34s had a nice cool start as they battled their way up the unforgiving hills to Wartburg. By the time they had reached the small town, the group had split up with clear front men leading the way. On the way down from Wartburg, the leaders had caught up with South African Yaku Ferreira, flying down the straits with the group not far behind. De Andre Alessandro from Italy used the energy that he had persistently been storing through the race and played it where it was needed to catch the leaders and take home the win with a time of 3 hours and 52 seconds. Well, it was hilly. <laughs> so it was really just a matter of just hanging in there as best you could. A lot of quality riders out there. Hard race, very, very fast. From the first climb, they attacked flat out. Especially the Italian that won. I mean, he rode phenomenal. It's a really important success for me. I'm really happy. I can't believe it. In the 35 to 39s, two riders broke away early. The peloton focused on their race, working steadily together to get over the hills without expending too much energy. Once the bigger climbs had been breached, the peloton picked up the pace and closed in on the two leaders. It was on the final hill rise that Igor Korpscher from Slovenia had to dig deep and give it everything to break the final climb and take the lead. He successfully gained a great gap to allow for any mistakes, finishing with a time of 2 hours and 59 minutes. I just couldn't believe I was in front of everybody. I got emotional. I've got. I did salute too much, you know, and fell. <laughs> but luckily, I've, I've got enough gap. The conditions are really good in favor for me. Perhaps 15 kilometers, just at the bottom of the last climb, we catch these two guys. There was, was some very strong guy from South Africa. He fired maybe four, or five times, just on the limit. You know, it was just a question of millimeters to fell off. I couldn't accelerate it anymore. It was the time for the descent to come. That was the moment I was prepared for, and I just jumped at it. The 40 to 44s ended the day of racing, showing that they are a highly competitive and tactical category. The peloton stayed together with the Italians pushing hard. Martin van Weyck from South Africa powering through and leading the group at times, trying to unsettle things. But it was Gabriel Clementoni of Italy who ended on top with a time of 3 hours and 3 minutes. Gabriel Clementoni, Bruce Dito, is taking place across the line. It was an awesome race, well organized. There was two guys, Bernard and the Italian guy, that got away. Up until about 20 k's, 
they had about two minutes 40 on us and then um, the chasing bunch uh, that last time just split. It was the Italian oak that attacked, the psycho lab went with him and uh, from there it was just chaos. I'm just glad I'm alive. <laughs> Overall, the day was a great success, with all riders happy with their World Tour experience.